everyone i am surprised hosting a talk with my good friend virginia she is over in ireland and she is a nutritionist that specializes in lipedema so she's actually supposed to be interviewing me on her page but we are in different countries and it's like nighttime there for her and i'm not really sure why it's not letting us go live so we're going to go live on here how about that and she's gonna interview me. So we're gonna see if we can get connected. Just give us one moment. Um, again, it was like not working for her on our page. So just do some eyebrow dance while we wait. It's gonna happen. I think it's here. Eh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have tough. it. I can't, okay. I can't see you now. Wait, I don't you know. Can't, you can't see me? No. <laughs> I can oh, hear boy. you, but I can't see you. What is happening with Instagram uh, tonight? I, I can clearly, clearly hear you. Can you see me? I can't see you at all, but I can, I can see, hear you. I can see you if you want to go forward. Do you just want to have a blind interview or what? <laughs> well, I don't know what we're going to do, but... um. Yeah, I don't know. Let's, the camera roll, is just let's not. Let's roll with it. Uh, um, <laughs> Somebody I, I did like... comment. People are commenting that they oh. can see us both, so I think it works out okay. Maybe it'll cut in at some point. Okay, that's great. That's perfect. And you look, and you look the... gorgeous. You look gorgeous. So. <laughs> I can't see you. I'm sure you look gorgeous, but I can't see you. <laughs> Such a pity. <laughs> but anyway, look, we'll have to go with it because I know you're very busy. So I was supposed to interview you exactly. And now your interview on your page so sorry but instagram instagram so because this will be displayed in both pages i can do the introduction as well so thank you so much leah for uh, taking your precious time off your clinic um to talk to us all about lymphatic health um, and i'm so excited to have you on so uh, do you want to introduce yourself first and tell us the audience, because this will be on my page as well, and tell the audience what you do, where you are, and, and everything about you. Yeah, so my name is Leah Levitan. I'm a licensed massage therapist here in Austin, Texas, and we have a clinic that specializes in lymphatic drainage. So we work with lymphatic systems for people who have conditions and chronic, you know, chronic lymph things that are going on, and we really, we really focus on that. Great. And do you see one-to-one um, -one clients or um, I believe you do courses as well. Do you want to tell everyone about your courses too? Sure. sure. I do have some online courses because um, I do love sharing this information in any way that I can help it get delivered. So it's definitely one of those where I've got, I've got an online course. I'm not yet working with people one-to-one. -one. Um, it's one of those where I want to make sure that the experience is good for that person and working with somebody virtually on lymphatic drainage is it's a bit of an undertaking so it's like they they kind of need the foundation and that's why i kind of made these courses was to really learn the anatomy and physiology and then just making it accessible for people so that they could do it at home on their own perfect so we're going to start because I know I have, we're very uh, tight with time as we lost five already trying to set up the connection. So I'm going to ask you the questions. Um, so I'm going to read them through. So um, Lee, what is the lymphatic system and what does it do? Yeah. So the lymphatic system is, it sort of runs alongside our cardiovascular system. Everybody's familiar with the heart that pumps blood and delivering oxygen and nutrients to and from the tissue. But what happens to the, the things when our body is done with these oxygen and nutrients, everything has to kind of get out of the body as well. So the other part of the vascular system is the lymphatic system. And so it picks up the things throughout the body that don't belong and delivers them to the detox organs so that these substances can leave our body. Um, we really don't want this stuff sticking around. It also transports and stores immune cells. So all of this fluid that's kind of flowing around through these pipes, it is mostly water, but it also has a similar component to seawater. So it's like salty and full of nutrients and waste material and hormones. And we just, 
you know, the blood kind of delivers and the lymphatics take away. And so it kind of works together, maintains fluid balance in the body, and it also transports digestive fats from the intestines. So I think it's interesting that you're a nutritionist that specializes in lipedema because that condition definitely impacts our lymphatic health. And it's just really awesome to, to be able to like share how cool this system is. Do you want to touch a little bit about why you think or what is your opinion on how can, um, how is the lymphatic system involved in lipedema? So lipedema is a connective tissue disorder, right? It's right there in the cellular matrix. The fat cells are a little bit larger than regular cells and there's just some inflammation going on. So it can lead to that fibrotic buildup in the tissue there where lymphatic fluid is made. Sometimes in later stages of lipedema, this will actually keep, keep lymphatic fluid from getting into the lymphatic system and can lead to lymphedema or it just, it leads to very sore, swollen tissue very tender tissue. So a lot of our lipedema clients here in Austin, um, that's kind of what we work with them on is just supporting the lymphatic system, trying to get that inflammation down so that their tissue isn't as tender, it isn't as swollen, and they're able to kind of go about their day-to-day -day stuff. So the lymphatic system is involved in lipedema. Yeah. But it's... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it's complicated, it right? Yeah. <laughs> It is, it is. But um, I mean, the two systems are really connected. They're close by as well. So the connective tissue and the lymphatics are very, very close in space too. So yeah, yeah. it would be, yeah. It would well, be some, people, connected. some people argue that it's not involved until the lymphatic fluid starts to get blocked, but mm. it's, it's right there in the cellular matrix. So that's why I feel like it's always involved. <laughs> Yes, exactly. And um, you meant you touched there on the lymphatic system is responsible to clearing toxins. So it is actually our detox, major detox organ, um, as well as the other functions. So it is really important to say that in lipedema, there's a lot of clogged toxins. So it makes sense to look after the lymphatics, which is what is really going to bring all the white blood cells and all the toxins away from the area of inflammation. So that's, um, I think, very important. So, very important. Um, yeah. So, the other question, which is really, really important, and you explain it so well on your highlight how to dry brush and when to dry brush. This is really important. Okay. All right. It's really mm. important dry brushing. Dry brushing is one of the many ways that you can support your lymphatic system, but it is a really great entry level and it, because it's easy to do. So uh, you'll notice a lot of times online, people will, will often start with their hands or their feet. But if you think about it a little bit differently, all of this lymphatic fluid that's flowing through our body, it has to go back into our cardiovascular system. And that happens right behind the collarbones. Once it's cleaned and recycled by the lymph nodes, then it's known, then it's known as plasma, which is the liquid component of blood. If you start here at your collarbones before you start dry brushing, you are going to create a little bit of a vacuum for that lymphatic fluid to start being pulled back into the system. Because this is very low pressure and lymphatic fluid loves to move from low to high pressure. So if we started with our hands and our feet, that's gonna be sort of like trying to push a river upstream. You really just wanna get to the dam thing, the dam, and kind of start your way from there. So I think if you plunge behind your collarbones, you can sort of, um, whenever you're doing this, you can, you can go on one side like this, and then that way you have a good angle with your fingertips, and you can just kind of mush and squish. Mush and squish because those structures that you're aiming for are pretty deep in there. A lot of times we'll see people um, you know, they'll say we need to use really light pressure and that's true. We don't want to be like buffing our skin like we're cars. We want it to be gentle. But if you just take like 15 seconds to touch on this area and then use your flat palm to sort of rub your armpits, rub the other armpit, you can smush in your belly, you can rub onto your hips and then behind your knees. It's sort of like Dr. Perry's big six. You could even just do the big six before you start dry brushing. I actually have that video, that tutorial pinned to my profile, if that's helpful for anyone listening. So once you prep everything, 
everything's we've already increased our lymphatic flow a lot so then you can start dry brushing and how you want to start dry brushing so our elbows and our knees are a natural bottleneck area this is where lymphatic fluid tends to get stuck so that's why we have that like heavy leg feeling sometimes when we're seated for long periods of time so what we want to do is we want to start dry brushing above the bottleneck so you're going to start with your upper arms and then you're going to kind of hit the bottleneck area which is going to be that inside portion of your elbow and then you'll dry brush your lower arms and then last your hands and it's the same thing with the legs you're going to start with your your upper legs your thighs and your hamstrings and your booty wrap it all around and kind of be brushing towards the lymph node clusters in the in the arms it's the armpits in the rib cage in the legs it's just the groin and then you'll kind of brush the inside portion of your knee and behind the knee and then you can move on and do your lower leg and your foot so that is basically oh yeah let's talk about strokes so i do see sometimes people will go in circular motions or they'll go up and then they'll go down they're just dry brushing in all all sorts of wild ways out there on the internet <laughs> Agree, so, agree. <laughs> so, and it can feel confusing, and I understand why it's confusing because there's so much information out there. It's like you could consume it forever and still feel confused. But if one of one of the best ways to describe it is if you, we want little short, gentle strokes. Virginia, I know you can't see this, but I'm doing short, gentle strokes on my arm, <laughs> and it's sort of like it's sort of like trying to get that last line of dust in the dustpan. You know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about? It's that last line that like won't get in the dustpan. And that's the sort of brushing strokes that we're looking for that our lymphatic system is most, respon uh, most responsive to. Brilliant, excellent. And I'm glad you touch on the strokes because I can see some weird, like literally yeah. <laughs> awful. And just to mention, I've learned from you how to dry brush because I was always taught to do start with the feet and go up. And then I, as soon as I discovered you, which was probably now over two years, I was like, OK, this makes total sense because you have to clean. You have to clear under the knee. You have to clear the areas where the congestion tends to be more. So it actually is more effective for me. Yeah, since you, um, me too. Since I found, <laughs> yeah, since I found you. So thank you for that. So glad you explain it because a lot of my um, lippy and in certainly lymphedema uh, ladies on my channel would love to hear that in more details. Brilliant. Now, I think we covered um, the dry brushing. And what about the gua? Because uh, I know you love the gua. Gua, I can never pronounce gua. Gua, shoo, shoo. Gua, <laughs> shoo. <laughs> Whatever. It's so cute. Uh, it's, it's gua sha. So gua sha, okay. gua sha, gua sha. Is like, gua sha is traditionally used on the body and has been for thousands of years. And recently, like in the last like 20, 30 years, people started using it on their face. And it's really amazing for kind of reducing fine lines and wrinkles and kind of clearing inflammation in the face. Cause there's a lot of lymph nodes, about a third of the lymph nodes in our body are in our head and neck. So a gua sha tool can be really powerful for people with, lip uh, with lipedema because it's good to sort of use a tool that you can kind of work around your nodules and any of those painful areas, like working the backs of the knee, working that bottleneck area on the inside of the elbow. Those are really just awesome ways to increase the, the fluid dynamics in that area and just help lymph flow more freely. And when, when would you do, um, when would you do it? Um, any particular time of the day, evening time, after a shower, when is the best time? The best time is when you remember to do it and you have time to do it. <laughs> Very good <laughs> so, answer. <laughs> yeah, yes. there's, de yeah. There's, no, there's no right time to show up for ourselves. You know, we kind of have to get it in where we can fit it in, if you ask okay. me. <laughs> and you would still do the six points before you do the massage, always? The gua sha? Like if you just sorry, the six on your so legs opening. or oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. I think I think that that's a really powerful combination and that can be added to any sort of thing that we're doing for our lymphatic health because the big six only okay. takes it only takes a couple minutes max you rub slap or tap 
those six lymphatic choke points and it and then you re you like bounce on the heels of your feet at the very end you could do this before you rebound before you get on a vibration plate before you're going to going on a walk any anywhere that you place that that intentional touching on these on these lymphatic points is going to really give you some brownie points for your lymphatic flow yeah because the the, the actual massage um of the gua shua i'm gonna keep saying that <laughs> they were laughing in the comments um it helps to it helps to actually what i found on myself behind the knee it helps to break actually to smooth the fibrotic tissue because i act i have little lumps behind my knees which are typical of lipedema um and i do find that it lose it really loosens them up um i use um frankincense oil so i use that particular anti-inflammatory oil as well while i'm doing my massage and it really really helps and it also helps with pain so um i don't know if you're familiar with frankincense i'm sure you are frankincense yeah, oil I've, yeah yeah definitely it smells awesome yeah um so that's great thank you for that um the other i think the other question was that we really want to touch on is the lymphedema um post breast cancer prevention too because as we know after a um, mastectomy is really really common well not common but it, it can uh, come after mastectomy um lymphedema in the arm so it's really important to prevent it and i'm gonna um leave you with all your best tips on how to prevent it yeah as much as we can yeah. yeah so supporting our lymphatic health after lymph nodes have been removed from the body is very important and i think when people are going through treatment and they're sort of coming out on the other side then they're trying to look for support from physical therapists occupational therapists and perhaps even massage therapists that are certified lymphedema experts so that they can kind of share with them the modifications that need to occur when they're doing lymphatic drainage and a lot of these things that we see online they are reflective of lymphatic systems that are complete is is like an intact an intact lymphatic system where that person isn't having any lymphatic issues so you sort of have to like back it up a little bit and if you're you know if you're missing lymph nodes we're just sort of running everything through our filter to be like is this right for me so let's just say that somebody gets uh two lymph nodes removed from the left side of their axillary lymph node cluster right then and and there even during the the healing process these lymphatic vessels are gonna they're gonna regenerate they grow back but lymph nodes don't and so it's really important to sort of i don't want to say baby this arm but there are things that can trigger lymphedema where if there was an injury or trauma to the arm uh, i know that a lot of experts will say like don't wear heavy bags on that shoulder um, you know, just trying to prevent any sort of injury that could trigger that sort of cascade of fluid. And wearing compression while we're flying is really helpful for people that are just trying to make sure that they're preventing that and helping their lymphatic system as much as they can so that it doesn't get overburdened. One of the things that I learned during my lymphedema certification in July was that the, oh man, I just, my brain just went off track, but it was something along the lines of, oh, it was good. Let me just keep oh. flowing. Let me keep flowing and I'll see if it comes Go. back to me. So, oh yeah, it's, it's the difference between, so what they're learning with research is that there are different anatomical lymphatic structures in the, um, like the shoulder collectors that collect the lymphatic fluid from the arm, like the top of the arm. And so it's like not everything from the whole arm is going to make its way into the armpit sometimes things will go right up and over because there's lymph nodes here as well and so one of the modifications for lymphatic drainage that's so important for people that are missing lymph nodes is that we don't want to we don't want to overburden the clusters here but there are still viable nodes so we do want to send some of the fluid here but then we also want to bypass that fluid and what we're learning is that sometimes there's like a there's a short neck or a long neck which just describes the structure here and they're starting to think that it's that there might be a tie with how people get how some people get lymphedema and some don't because 
Some people could have one lymph node removed and they get lymphedema. Some people could have 10 lymph nodes removed and they don't get lymphedema. So it's really hard to determine what's, what's necessarily causing this. Um, and, and that's something that we're still learning more about, which I found really interesting. Like during my training, I was just like, oh, we're still, still learning. <laughs> Always, yeah. always. But one of my questions was exactly what you touched there. So once you remove the lymph nodes and obviously you're trying to dry burst, you're trying to self-massage or obviously where are you bringing the fluid? Where it should, should it be a, another direction? Because obviously if the lymph nodes, the cluster under the arm are not clearing, um, I suppose that way, where, where do you send it? I know you mentioned in one of your videos that it does change the path. Once it doesn't have that way, it can change path. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. So there's something really cool. There, um, there are clusters of, of lymphatic vessels that will transfer fluid from one side of the body to the other because our lymphatic fluid really drains like it does in nature. So imagine that rain is falling on the roof of your house. If rain falls to one side, it's going to go down one side. If it falls to the other side, it's going to fall down the other side but there are these little channels that sort of connect the two. Let's call them like drainage, like drain pipes, if you will, or gutters. Yeah. <laughs> so we got to use the gutters so that we can redirect that fluid. So for people that are dry brushing that are missing lymph nodes, say in their left arm, what you can do is you can ask for help from the right side and the anastomoses, which are just clusters of about 10 or so lymphatic vessels. And usually they're dormant but they really come to life when they're needed. So our body is so intelligent and it just, it just knows that it needs to support and to help redirect. So you can, you can really dry brush just straight across your chest and send it to the other armpit where you do have a full set of lymph nodes and they're there to help. So you can, you can direct the fluid from under the arm to the bicep, but everything on the top, I would maybe suggest just going straight up the bicep and or sorry, the deltoid and the bicep kind of bring all of that up towards your collarbone there. So like in this little, in this little V-shaped structure, this is where that fluid goes back in. So you can just kind of sweep it there. You could sweep it via the anastomoses from one side to the other and sweep it here. And then it also goes from armpit to hip. So you could theoretically dry brush straight down. I know it defies all odds because lymph usually moves towards the heart. It usually moves in one direction, but it'll go both ways with these anastomoses. So what you can do is dry brush from your armpit, from your arm, from your armpit, from your breast, all the way over and just go down to the groin, which is pretty dang cool. Very good. Excellent. Thank you so much. And then one question, I'm just conscious about time before we go. If somebody had an abdominal surgery, okay, and we know the abdomen is one, well, we know, and you, you tell us all about it, uh, that is one of the major um, areas where actually uh, lymph fluid gets sent to. So if somebody had an abdominal operation and it has scar tissue, would the lymphatic drainage be impaired? Well, it kind of depends on the surgery and the person, how well they healed. I feel like sometimes people will have, say, like a C-section and they don't really experience too much fluid retention or, you know, they're, the lymph nodes that are in the pelvic bowl are, are pretty much uninterrupted and the lower body doesn't have trouble clearing. So I think it is like a very highly individualized answer, but it can happen, yes, because scar tissue okay. creates scar tissue creates a physical roadblock for our lymph. And so then lymph has to find a way around. But again, because lymph flows just as it does in nature, it will find, it will find a path, but it just needs a little bit of help and guidance. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm just, I think we were running out of time. So I think that's all. You touched on the six points. Um, you touched on all the other things that we had discussed. So thank you so much. I apologize again for the technical That's issue okay. on my page, but thank you. And Leah, um, this is for my page. Um, you can find Leah on Lean Flow Club, and she has amazing courses um, that you can you can look you can you can look um, all the details um, on your page. Do you have a website, Leah, as yeah. well? 
yeah, lymphloveclub.com. And then I've got um, a link in the bio. I would like to share that uh, my friend Babs and I, she's also a certified lymphedema therapist. We're going to be starting a book club starting November 6th. This is free for anybody that would like to join. And we're also doing lymphatic yoga. So it's going to be 45 minutes of lymphatic yoga, 45 minutes of the book club. And this, uh, this go around, we're going to be reading a book called How to Change Your Body by Sasha Briggs. And we're very excited about that. So we'd love to have whoever would like to join and just find that, that community, even though we're meeting virtually, it's still very powerful and, you know, consuming ideas and sharing those ideas with one another is, is powerful stuff. Yes. I, we, I'm hoping I can join. I just need to check the time zone and hopefully I can make we, it. I would love to do that. So. We've had a couple of people join us from Ireland, actually. It's pretty neat. Lovely. <laughs> but Lovely. Was, but I will were, definitely. They were in bed. <laughs> <laughs> they were like they were like joining from bed, so I'm not really sure. It probably wouldn't work out so good, but we're yeah. there. If you we'll need see. Us. We'll see. Thank you very much, and um, to take to have taken your time, your precious time to do the live, Leah. And um, anyone that hasn't followed Leah, go and follow her now, <laughs> as this video will be on my page as well. So uh, thank you so much, Leah. Yeah. And yeah, enjoy your day. And yeah, I'll thanks enjoy for having me. My bedtime. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thanks, Leah. Wow. What, what time is it there? <laughs> it's half eight. Just gone okay. half eight. Not too, eight thirty-five. Too <laughs> all right, all right. Not too all bad. Right, cool. Not too bad. Awesome. Thanks, Leah. Take right. care. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye.